that we ask. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, this is the confidence which we have in the Son of God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have obtained the request made of him. If anyone sees his brother committing what, what is not a deadly sin, he will ask, and God will, keep, and God will give him life for those whose sin is not deadly. There is sin which is deadly. I do not say that one is to pray for that. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin which is not deadly. We know that anyone born of God does not sin, but he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. We know that we are of God, and the whole world is in the power of the evil one. And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding to know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. The word of the Lord. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing a new song to the Lord, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel rejoice in its maker. Let Zion children exult in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music with timbre and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the poor with salvation. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory and rejoice as they take their rest. Let the praise of God be in their mouth. This is an honor for all his faithful. The Lord takes delight in his people. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region of shadow of death, light has dawned. you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus and his disciples went into the land of Judea. There he remained with them and baptized. John also was baptizing at Ainon near Salim because there was much water there and people came and were baptized. For John had not yet been put in prison. Now a discussion arose between John's disciples and a Jew of a purifying. And they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who was with you beyond the Jordan to whom you bore witness, here he is baptizing. 
and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what is given him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have been sent before him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom, the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him, rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now full. He must increase, but I must decrease. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So first John continues his teaching and says that there is a certain confidence that we must have. And the confidence is that if we have made a prayer according to the will of God, then he hears us. So it's not just any prayer. But the prayer must be according according to the will of God. In prayer, we align our wills with the will of God because his will is that which reigns supreme. So every time, the question we should be asking ourselves is, what is the will of God for me? And even in our prayer, we should seek to pray according to his will, like Jesus would do. Lord, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. But not my will, your will be done. And he says, such prayer is heard by God. He listens to it. He hears it. And he says, if he hears it, then we are confident that whatever we ask, according to his will, shall be done for us. I pray that today and the days ahead, your prayer will be according to the will of God. And that because you pray in that manner, God will listen to your prayer. And whatever you ask for, he will do for you. Seek to know the will of God. Seek to pray according to the will of God. Seek to come before God with all humility. Accepting that even when you pray your will, that you are ready to accept his will. Because his will is always the best and his will must reign supreme. Amen. Then he says, my friends, my brothers, if you see your brother commit a sin, which is not deadly, pray for him. Then he says again, I do not say about the sins that are deadly, that pray for him. But the sins that are not deadly, pray for him. Then he says, all wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is deadly and there is sin that is not deadly. And you would have heard in your catechesis that there is deadly sin, and that, or there is mortal sin, and there is venial sin. So St. John is making that distinction clear here. And once he does not say that when it is deadly sin, pray for the person, then certainly there is a different remedy for that. But you and I know that he has given authority to men. And he has said, that whose sins you forgive are forgiven, and whose sins you retain are retained. In the sacrament of reconciliation, we have a beautiful gift. So that even though first John says that, when it is a deadly sin, I do not say pray about it. We know we have a remedy already. And that is a gift given to us by God. That when we have committed deadly sin, mortal sin, we can walk to the confessional, the court of mercy, where everyone finds himself guilty, where God finds us guilty, and yet we are acquitted and discharged. If you don't want this, I don't know what you want. You have done wrong. You have admitted you are wrong. You come to the court. You admit your fault. The court finds you guilty. And yet you are acquitted and discharged. No one is going to condemn you because someone has paid the price on the cross already. 
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, whenever the opportunity is presented for us to seek the Lord, when we have sinned and it is a mortal sin, let us take the opportunity, let us seize it. Let us go to the confessional. Let us wash ourselves clean because we are not of Satan, we are of God. And I pray that the understanding that Jesus gives, the favor that Jesus gives, will continue to guide our lives journey so that we will continue to be of God, walking in the light and not in darkness. But at any point in time when we have committed a sin, the best place to hide is not away from God, but in God. His mercy is inexhaustible. His mercy covers a multitude of sin. His mercy is greater than the ocean. It can wash away. It can cleanse everything. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the Lord opens his arms every time in the confessional. Let us go to him. Approach the throne of grace and obtain mercy for ourselves. Amen. Then in the gospel reading of today, people rush to Jesus, just like sometimes people will rush to you. This place that you are the village champion. This place where you are the most significant person. Somebody else has come home. And the way everybody is healing the person. Be careful not to be overtaken by pride. Nor be overtaken by jealousy. They walk together. Be careful to note and to praise another person when their abilities are beyond yours. Or when they are doing better than you. Or when because of age, you have outlived your significance and somebody else is coming. Let us pick up the attitude of encouraging them. Let us pick up the attitude of knowing where we truly are and acknowledging those who are beyond us. Because pride only goes before a fall. He says, I must decrease and he must increase. Be careful of those who come to you trying to incite jealousy in your heart about others because they have become significant. Unfortunately for somebody like Saul, it was done to him and he did not look through it well. And so he went after David. And a lot of the times he saw that he was not able to touch David because the hand of the Lord was with him. I pray that in such circumstances, when others come after you because they are jealous, because of where God has lifted you to, that God will protect you. But I pray that you shall not go after those who because of the favor of God have gone ahead of you. That you shall know your place and accept it. And that when somebody is doing well, you shall project the person. You shall make others know that this is the rightful person at this point in time. And you shall even encourage such people to go and do better. However, in our life's journey, there is one person we must always project. Just like John the Baptist, I pray that in my life and in your life, Jesus shall increase and we shall decrease. Wherever you are, if you are a parent, I pray that in your home, Jesus shall increase and you shall decrease. At your workplace, I pray that Jesus will increase and you shall decrease. Even in your very life, in your very going and your coming, in your decision making, in everything that you do, that Jesus and God himself and the will of God shall take center stage, shall be that which goes before you every time, so that you shall decrease and God shall increase. Let your life's project be to project Jesus Christ wherever you find yourself. And I pray that his favor will accompany you always. Amen.